Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live. More great stand-up coming your way starting right now. Before I bring up your first comic, I'd like to mention that I have a brand new book out there called Zero G. It's a sci-fi thriller that takes place in the year 2050. It's available in hardcover and, and paperback, and we're even going to do one in Braille for NFL referees. <laughs> You've seen our first comic on two dope queens. How about a big round of applause for Ryan Shutt? Oh. oh, hello, Gotham. Uh, let me ask you guys a question. Uh, have you guys ever caught one of your old friends with their new personality? You know what I'm talking about? You start hanging out with one of your old friends again you haven't seen in a really long time, and suddenly they have all these new aspects of their personality that you didn't agree to and initially signed on to be their friend. You know? Like, I started hanging out with my old friends I hadn't seen in, like, a really long time, and uh, we haven't had a single conversation since we started hanging out again where he hasn't bragged about his salary to me. Which, like, that's gross, right? But here's, here's the worst part about it, is it's not even, like, an impressive salary. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's a salary that everybody in this room can easily imagine the lifestyle it affords. And like, I don't want to put a numerical figure on it, but for me, it's the amount of money that I need to make where like, if I went home to visit my parents, like it's enough money to make me stop stealing toothpaste, <laughs> but it's not enough money to make me stop stealing towels. Do you mean like it's right in that range? And he's acting like it's like I actually pay for HBO Go money. I'm like, nobody's got that kind of fucking money, man, all right? <laughs> Just Russian oligarchs and Saudi princes watch Game of Thrones illegally. Everybody else steals from Kyle's mom who lives in Cleveland, all right? <laughs> Stop acting like you're better than us. Watch a lot of stuff. I'm a huge NBA fan. You guys, you guys like, the, like the NBA at all? <laughs> Not really the best uh, response to that. I actually saw someone actively shaking their head like he was angry that I brought it up. <laughs> Well, that's a shame, because I'm just going to power through that fucking joke anyways, guys. Sorry. <laughs> the only thing I can relate to other people about. Uh, I love the NBA. It's like one of my favorite things. I only got one complaint about it. It's just like a minor quibble. I don't like that it's all in HD now. You know, like the high-definition broadcast. You can just see everybody just way too well. You know, like NBA players. Not the greatest looking bunch of people I've seen in my life, you know? <laughs> like, you ever see, you guys ever seen Kevin Durant in HD? <laughs> Crowd that doesn't really watch the NBA. You guys ever seen this guy? <laughs> like, he's a tall, skinny, goofy bastard, man. You know, I know I'm not in like a great position to talk, but he's just got that like, <laughs> you just got that like nightmare before Christmas physique thing around you know what I'm talking about. Like, he just he puts on a basketball jersey, just like a plastic bag caught in a tree branch. It's like a weird thing to look at. <laughs> like, I love LeBron, but like when you watch him in HD for too long, like you notice the age of his head doesn't really match up with the age of his body, you know? <laughs> it's like LeBron James, like, like from the neck down, he's got that like shiny, muscular, like Carl Weathers from Predator body, you know? But then from like the neck up, it's just present day Danny Glover. You know what I'm talking about? It's just like... <laughs> It's like somebody cast a curse on his head in exchange for basketball powers at some point. I think the worst looking dude that's ever played in the NBA is retired now, Steve Nash. Steve Nash has got an awful looking face. He's got, he's got one of those faces where like when you look at him, you're just very aware of the fact that he's got a skull. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's just this like taut skin mask over bone, you know? Like, he's, have you guys ever seen anybody pet a cat too hard? Do you know what I'm talking about? Just that like, ah, ah. Ah, he's got a face like he's just always skydiving. You know, just like, they're just like always G-Force acting on him. It's brutal, man. Yeah, if, it's, if it sounds like I have weird resentment towards uh, NBA players, it's because I do. Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, not too long ago, I, uh, I went home for like a family reunion. And uh, when I was there, my uncles like all confronted me 
and insisted on telling me that when she was my age, my mom used to bang, just like a ton of professional athletes. <laughs> yeah. Some heavy shit to drop on your nephew, <laughs> I feel like, at like his baby cousin's birthday party. It's just how my family delivers new. That's been a part of getting older that I haven't liked, by the way, is just my family slowly revealing its horrifying past to me, <laughs> you know? Like, my family treats its awful secrets the same way the government does with declassifying information. Like, they feel like because four decades have passed, they can now open the file on my mom's activities during the 1976 All-Star Weekend, you know? <laughs> like, I don't want to say who she, like, like I, what I will say, I'll say this about it. It's like, my mom, like, she's like a pretty good looking woman. But the thing about it is she's not like consistently pull down professional athlete dick good looking. So like what that tells me is like the, may the, like the way that she made the groupie squad was just through coachability and hustle. Like, I don't want to know that. I don't know about my mom, man. Like, I don't want to tell you who she got involved with, but like I will say, I can't watch ESPN Classic now without walking around like angry for like a week afterwards. <laughs> like they played one of those NBA top 50 players of all time reunions and like I almost bit through my cheek in a rage. Like, I said, fancies of rolling up, like, rolling up in those reunions now and just being like, why the fuck didn't you call her back, Julius? <laughs> it's not healthy. <laughs> you guys, uh, you guys fuck with nature documentaries at all? <laughs> yeah. 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 Clearly, I like things that just the general public just does not like. <laughs> this is... I don't know why I feel like having like a conversation in public is gonna go better than it does in bars. Like it's just, this is, you guys are seeing how every conversation with another human being goes for me in a bar. Strained and everybody wishes it was over really quick. Well, I love nature documentaries. It's one of my, all right. All right, this just feels patronizing now. I love them, man. Here's the thing. I feel like people that make nature documentaries, like, they, don't, they don't get nearly enough credit, right? So it's like an impossible job to make a nature documentary, and no one cares. <laughs> it's so hard to do that job. In my book, the people that make nature documentaries, they're saints, man. Like, they gotta be to do that job every day, day in, day out, and not freak out just like all the time. <laughs> it's like, if <laughs> the people that made nature documentaries had my personality, you'd be watching one and the narrator would just be like, this is the Andean spotted panther. We spent over seven years in the wilderness just to capture one glimpse of this elusive cat. No one has captured him on film before. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I said seven years. <laughs> in the wilderness just to capture one glimpse of that fucking cat. <laughs> I was away from my family for seven years. <laughs> I missed the birth of my son. He calls me David now, not dad, David, because I missed his birth. You kind of fast forward to hopefully skip the breakdown. And just like, seven years I was in the wilderness, why? I went to Juilliard for Shakespeare. What was I supposed to be doing with my life right now? This isn't even my real accent. I'm from Jersey, man. They just pay more if you sound British. It's fucking bullshit. You fast forward again, it's like, I don't know what happened, man. <laughs> I was supposed to be in movies by now, but it didn't work out. <laughs> Our plane crashed in the Andes, man. It was terrible. We had to eat one of the camera guys. He was my best friend, but he was the weakest one. <laughs> Everybody at home was watching like, I don't understand why he sits on smoking weed before watching. He's really backfiring on us right now. <laughs> I read a lot of self-help books, if that isn't immediately apparent already. <laughs> I don't like them, man. I've read so many of them that like, I know what the formula behind like every single one of them is. I'll tell you what it is. All self-help book authors are just batshit crazy. They're completely nuts. But they're also geniuses, because they realize that all they got to do, right, like an unbelievable self-help book, is take all the crazy, narcissistic rants that are playing on loop in their head 24-7 and switch out all the I's and me's with you's <laughs> and yours, right? 
It's like, for example, like a book called Behold Your Glory. <laughs> it's a great title for self-help. We want the original title, Behold My Glory. That's just like something somebody yells before they shoot a politician. You I mean, that's really like a great self-help book title. There's other books in history that were almost self-help books. Just like a little tweak would have made them that way. You know, this didn't make it. Like, for example, Mein Kampf. It's a book written by Adolf Hitler, one of history's best known, most evil, most irredeemable psychopaths. Your Kampf. <laughs> First ballot Oprah's Book Club, I guarantee it, man. If you take that book and you switch out the word Jews with the term self-doubt, it comes a really uplifting read, man. All right, that's it for me. I've been Ryan Shutt. Thank you so much. Comedy Club in New York City. Jocelyn Chia is taking the stage when we return. Stay tuned for more laughs on Axis TV.